Okay, let's try that again. Let's, uh, I think that we're live here. It's Friday, June 3rd, and um, let's take a look at the market, not me. So let's go ahead and click on that. Um, so we've got this market that is coming down to these prior, down through these prior levels of support from last week. Uh, after attempting to recover, obviously, you know, we broke that downtrend line. That failed to create a higher high in here. We had a, a, a strong sell-off, and now this level that was 125, 121 uh, and a quarter to 121.50 basically is our new important level of resistance early next week. That we're going to have to get back above that just to become really neutral in the intermediate term. Otherwise, we have to look at this market as what are the potential downside levels. We've got the April lows right down at about 128.50, and then I'm sorry, 129. Uh, uh, 40 I think was the level below that we have the 150 day moving average which seems to me to be a likely and reasonable downside objective before a bounce could really commence that uh, that might last a couple days but you know the nature of this market has been changing we had support at the uh, you know shorter term then the 100 day, so we had the 50 day then the 100 a couple tests of the 100 now it looks like we'll probably test that 150 day moving average on the uh, S S P Y, the Nasdaq 100. I think that uh, people have to refresh. Um, let me just type that in here. So this uh, is somewhat of a disaster. This broadcast here today. I apologize for that. I don't know what the issues are. Uh, but anyways, the NASDAQ, for its part, is pretty much right on top of that 150-day moving average. And if we were to underslice that, like, you know, similar to the way we under uh, cut the 100-day moving average, uh, maybe we're going to, you know, go down and, and test the April lows here, which would be closer to 55.40. There is no magic to those moving averages. The moving averages are like a magnetic force field that a lot of times create a lot of attention and, and therefore a lot of uh, orders, you know, bids to uh, cover short positions from those who are positioned short. Uh, people looking to buy near those uh, uh, moving averages will, will put a little bit of uh, support into that market. And other people just kind of stand aside and say, you know what, it's too late to sell short now that we're at this important moving average. So uh, they stay away from uh, adding supply. They, they say, hey, I'm not going to sell any more of my long positions because we should be due for a bounce. But again, there's no magic to those moving averages. And when we look at the uh, intermediate term or the 30-minute chart of the uh, the queues, we found resistance in that prior zone of support. So that's what we were talking about for the last couple of weeks, that this prior zone of, and that, that's the way support and resistance are. Sometimes you get a precise, exact uh, number where one level becomes support or, or resistance, you know, 58, 35 or whatever. But uh, it's usually a, a zone or, or a band of resistance, a, a prior area of support that becomes that resistance and that w what we've seen in here. Now today, obviously, we had the gap lower in the NASDAQ as well. The market rallied up pretty much to the lows of the last couple of days. We can see that clearly, more clearly on the 10 minute time frame and, and, and this little level in here that's been important, 57. We're going to need to get back above and I think hold for at least a half hour above that 57 next week before we can look at this intermediate term trend as, okay, now we're becoming a little bit more neutral again. We've got uh, a declining 10, 20, and 50-day uh, moving average kind of flattened out. We're breaking support levels. and. A lot of times when we break the important support levels, the obvious support levels, that's where the bounce begins. But uh, you know, being early, obviously, can be extremely costly. So you have to be aware of that. The Russell 2000 does look like it's headed for a test of its 150-day moving average as well. And this, you know, this market has adhered pretty well to the 50-day, then the 100-day uh, moving average twice. We had a kind of, kind of a violent move in here and now the 150 day moving average is the next big moving average that people will be focused upon and that level is right now at $79.76 so you know we can kind of take a horizontal line and say is there anything else of significance in that level um, pretty you know those were this, this was an important level actually uh, $80 uh, through 
for, for uh, a good portion you know early in the year as resistance then we had some support near that $80 level so it looks like 70 you know 79 and a half to 80 maybe we'll get a little bit of a, a support or bounce from there but there's no reason to think right now that it's going to be a bounce that lasts for uh, that, that turns this market back around so um, Again, the nature of the, of the market, the, to the tone of the market has changed. We're getting, uh, you know, the semiconductors, which kind of led this market higher, obviously had that bigger level of resistance at 37 a couple weeks ago. We broke down through there, and that was, a, you know, another one of these markets that uh, the prior band of support uh, became resistance. It wasn't an exact level, uh, but this 3570 to 36 was the level of resistance where we had prior, uh, you know, importance uh, assigned to the market in this level in price memory. We got up into that area this week and were rejected very hard, and and that's what's happening. You know, the you know just the market has been declining a lot easier than it has been uh, going up. That these rallies, these are you know these counter trend rallies are are coming up grudgingly and failing pretty quickly. So. Uh, the semiconductors, you know, next week this is going to be an important level, right? Right in this, uh, you know, 3475, 3480. It had been support. That support did hold as resistance in here today. So, you know, pretty much to the penny in there. And and, and then we had a a, a a strong sell-off from that area that really accelerated it once once it broke down through that uh, volume weighted average price for the day. So the semiconductors are pretty much right on that 150-day moving average. There, it's it's about 15 or would be, that be about 18 cents above the 150-day moving average. But you know we'd seen the 50-day moving average and uh, prior prior resistance at uh, uh, the thirty five dollar level uh, failed to hold his support, and we've closed this gap. And now we're looking at uh, you know basically the one hundred fifty day moving average down to about these lows from uh, late March, early April at about thirty three fifty. Wouldn't surprise me. I think uh, if we got just a little bit further flush, you know, it's kind of a uh, you know a, 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 a more panicky move below a key moving average would, would get us down uh, 3350-ish I think would be a, a level to start looking for this market to, to potentially turn around uh, next week. That is for a bounce and then we'll see just how uh, strong the seller's resolve is up near 33, 7, uh, 30, uh, I'm sorry, $34.75 where we found resistance uh, today. So you know the markets. Uh, it, it, it's we've we've got uh, some trouble here for the for the bulls right now, and when we look at the weekly time frames, we're not in these. But, you know, we're not in these big downtrends. You, you, you can't say that. And, and we've got most of these moving averages still advancing. So I, I think that we're going to see, you know, maybe further pullback again, 33 and a half on the semiconductors would make sense. And then we, we bounce a little bit further. Maybe then we create a lower high and this market becomes more distributional. And, and then we, you know, start uh, pulling back deeper. It, it's, it's certainly a possibility, but I don't think it's a... Uh, a big chance that we're going to see these 200-day moving averages and longer-term time frames tested uh, in, in, in bigger levels of prior resistance. But when you look at you know certain groups like uh, the retailers we spoke about last week, that you know this had been a big breakout level for the retail stocks. Uh, when you look at the monthly chart, they had broken out to all-time highs just uh, a couple months back. And you know, looking at the daily chart, we had seen. That uh, well, last week. Let me let me go here. On, uh, zoom in a little bit further. Last week we had seen that this prior level of resistance uh, did hold as support, pretty much kind of to the penny in there, and you know above that rising 50-day moving average. But again, it's you can't trust these markets when we have uh, the the shorter term uh, time frame showing us this, as much trouble as they have. And, and here, you know, this prior. Uh, area uh, of significance. Really, really, this prior support level is. Uh, let, let's t take a look at the 30-minute time frame in there. Actually, this prior support level really is what became resistance. You know, 
Wednesday of this week, and, and uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday of this week, and that's where we had sold off hard from. So the retailers sold off, obviously, real hard in here. They, they came back in after what was a very significant breakout on a, on a longer-term time frame. So we're seeing a violent pullback, and, um, you know, these are some key longer-term levels that I don't think we're going to see immediately, but you, you look at the magnitude of this sell-off in a short period of time, I think we're probably uh, due for some kind of bounce. Maybe we get a little bit further pullback in, the, in, in these retailers. You can see they've undercut that, uh, you know, the 50, the 100, and the 150-day moving average all in three days here. So they're, you know, they're getting a little bit oversold, but uh, again, there's no evidence yet that these things are ready to bounce. Look at the one minute chart, look at the you know five minutes of, of the last uh, five days. They're, they're still in, in rough shape. So let them bleed out before you try to uh, uh, let the, try to uh, you know look for, for a bounce. Um, next week, you know these retailers, I think that uh, if we get a bounce, it, was, it would probably be up towards about 180, 108.75 to 109 would, would be a, maybe a level it could bounce up to, but I, I think it would fall short of any further recovery uh, in that level. So uh, the U.S. dollar continues to fall apart here. It's you know it, it tried to make a, a rally, uh, it, you know it tried to break this downtrend line, which it uh, broke this downtrend line, I should say. It got above the 50-day moving average, but again the direction of the 50-day moving average was lower, and most times rallies with a declining 50-day moving average will uh, end up failing. So the U.S. dollar, obviously, I mean, look at the, uh, the euro versus the U.S. dollar. Uh, this market, as we had noted, uh, came right into that 100-day moving average in here, uh, broke some resistance earlier this week. And, um, you know, the, the euro dollar is, uh, or the, you know, the euro is uh, back in rally mode. We'll see if it can, you know, if it gets back up to those highs. But, uh, you know, the UUP, again, is the, uh, is the, is the uh, composite, uh, you know, weight, uh, weighting of uh, uh, different currencies versus the U.S. dollar, and obviously, you know, it remains below the 50, 100, 150, 200, and the direction of all those moving averages is lower. So, um, you know, the, the market's uh, difficult to trust if you're if you're along. There's a lot of bigger momentum names are breaking down. Anything related to China is. Uh, um, in trouble, you know. First, the little ones, obviously. You know, if you've been following the Chinese story, uh, Josh Brown's been doing a great job covering that at Reform Broker. But either, you know, the little ones had have had these red flags and accounting problems, and now there's rumors about Cena. And, and maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. But you know, similar to what I had written about Penson um, back in here, is when there's smoke, there's fire, and, and it's good to see that. You know, Penson is recovering, and maybe the you know the rumors uh, aren't as as bad as they had seemed. But I would rather miss the opportunity than uh, on, on the long side and the bounce when there's a question of accounting issues. I think that you have to sell and just move aside and say you know forget about that one. There are you know there are times when uh, um, accounting issues do get resolved. In a positive way, uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters was one of those. I think it was back here that they had the um, uh, accounting issues in here, and this is where those accounting issues were resolved. And it's obviously been you know significantly higher since then. But uh, I think the, the theme for next week, uh, and I'm going to wrap this up here, is that we see maybe a little bit further bleeding on Monday, maybe even into Tuesday. Uh, that, that takes us down to puts it down through the uh, the lows of, of April and probably down through to or through the 150 day moving average then we could probably get a, a, a violent bounce similar to these uh, uh, let me just clear this up similar to these bounces in here but I don't think they're going to be rallies that uh, would be uh, sustained until the, the markets have uh, corrected more through time built a base and, and recovered so uh, I forgot who tweeted it but I think I retweeted it. I, I don't know though someone said on Wednesday and I thought this was a smart thing to say is that when the market gets damaged like this 
uh, it, it's a it's a good thing because it allows us to to kind of go through our watch list and clean out a lot of crap that's on there and, and a lot of stocks that just don't make sense. I mean, if you if you look at uh, all the Chinese names, the the recent IPOs, these you know these names are you know Kihu, uh, Dang. They're you know they're down at uh, all time lows. Wait, you know here's here's one good contrarian play I wanted to mention possibly for next week. Seems like every time that uh, General Motors makes a, a, a significant new low that it it, it it bounces pretty quickly. So keep your eye on that one if you're a contrarian. But obviously it's it's in a huge downtrend, um, and, and and that there's there's risk there. I also think that you know there's possibly uh, Dendrion could be. Uh, something that that uh, it, it seems as though the the pressure is building underneath this 44 is really the bigger level here, and there's always a big short position in it. I think Goldman upgraded them this week. Uh, it, it's holding up right at that rising 10-day moving average in the weekly chart. You know this 44 level above there, maybe this thing could get going nicely. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, a little stock EGHT. Uh, this this one's been pulling back. Uh, it's it's you know this prior resistance. It's right on it right now. There's really um, it, it probably needs to clear. I don't know this this high from today. Um, most likely actually about uh, three dollars and fifty five cents is what it looks like. Uh, but that's that's one to keep an eye on um, for for the week ahead. Um, I bailed on that LNG completely out of it. There's no reason to carry a, a uh, uh, a, a loser over into the next week. Someone asked me, who was it? I, I don't know. I'd seen it on Twitter. I asked me about uh, a couple stuff. I wasn't going to take stock requests, but this one was one I was watching already for next week, and that's Westport Innovations, WPRT, and they're involved in that natural gas uh, fleet uh, uh, changeover type thing. Looking like it's making maybe this inverted head and shoulders pattern right here on this daily chart. The weekly, it's up, you know, at what are would have been all time highs for it and uh, I think the stock is building nicely in here we've still got a declining five day moving average in short term we've got this 25 level that that looks like uh, it, you know if it can clear 25 and hold above that for more than a half hour or so then I think you get a, a pretty quick test of 26 bucks a share and up through 26 bucks a share it, it seems as though it should be able to quickly make it for uh, for new highs and, and I believe there's a, a good size short position in there as well Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the uh, difficulties we had. I didn't even mention the financials, did I? Financials, you know, really have been you know, the 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 market that's that's been in the downtrend, and the rest of the market, I guess, is is catching up to the financials. Is is what you could you know look at this as, and um, you know, financials had a rough week, obviously. Uh, they could still see down towards 15 bucks a share. It looks like this has been an important level. Even uh, 1450 isn't uh, completely out of the question for this group, but um, I think it's getting stretched to the downside. Whereas you know some of these other markets, we've still got some bleeding to do. Let them bleed out. Let the you know let the big volume washout come in, and, and uh, then we probably get a bounce at some time. You know Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And we'll have to see uh, if that bounce materializes, number one, and number two, if, if, uh, if it can turn into something else. So, as always, uh, it's, it's a developing situation, and uh, it always keeps it interesting. Hope you have a good weekend and had a good trading week. I will talk to you uh, next week. Thanks.